Hi there folks, in today's demonstration I'm going to show you how I deploy the latest language model, Mistral Large, into Azure AI using AI Studio in Azure. So this is a new pay-as-you-go model that's now available in Azure. I'm going to show you how to set it up. I'll then bring that model into Power Automate and not only that, I'll then demonstrate how to bring it into a Power App so that you can have a full history context conversation with the latest model that's making the news. So if that's something that interests you, please make sure you like and subscribe. And without further ado, let's jump into the demonstration. So to kick things off, I'm gonna start from the Azure portal and there are a few prerequisites to check. First, in the Azure AI Studio, which is currently in preview, we need to set up an Azure AI Hub resource. And we can do that by clicking on New Azure AI and then creating a new resource group. In this case, I'm going to call it the Mistral AI Hub Resource. Then the next important thing to do is to ensure that you have the region set correctly. Now the same applies when you're using the different OpenAI services. If you don't have the correct region, not all the deployments are available. So if you want GPT 3.5 or 4, you need to make sure that you have the correct region. And the same applies here for the Mistral large language model. We can either use the East US or the France Central. I'll pick the France Central. And then I just need to give this a final name. So we'll call this the Mistral large language model. Now there are other resources that we can review, but I'm gonna go straight into review and create, and we will create our AI hub resource. And as long as we don't receive any errors, we're then able to proceed on to the deployment of our Mistral large language model. Now whilst I was testing this out, I actually had problems with the deployment here in that I didn't have a pay-as-you-go subscription with a credit card. And so I actually got a failure come up. So if you do get a failure about payment, make sure you have a default credit card associated to your subscription. So with the deployment now complete, we can go to the resource and it's from here that we can launch the Azure AI Studio. Here, we need to go and create a new AI project. And whilst there's a name already provided, I'm gonna again call this the Mistral Large LM Project and go ahead and create that project. With the project now in place, we can go to deployments and we can create an, a pay-as-you-go instance of the Mistral large model. So you can see there, I can select that and we can deploy that model. So by clicking on subscribe and deploy, the model will be added into our project. One last final step, we need to give that deployment a name also. So it's a Mistral large and I'll call this the Demo Bird 365 and hit deploy. Now, after approximately 30 seconds, we have our new Mistral large language model deployed, ready for action. Now, in order to use this deployment in Power Automate, I need to take a copy of this target URL, and I'll go ahead and copy that to my clipboard. I also have a key here as well, which I'm also gonna copy into my Windows clipboard, and we'll get that later on. And then I'm going to go and jump into the playground. So very much like in the playground for OpenAI in Azure, there is a playground also for the Mistral model. On the right hand side, I can see the parameters, which we're familiar with, with the maximum tokens, temperature, top P, and also safe prompt. And then down at the bottom here, I have the ability to start having a conversation with our model. So for instance, I could ask who is the current prime minister of the UK, and we'll get a feel for the training data that the Mistral model has, and at the moment it believes that it's Boris Johnson. So it'd be safe to say that the model was probably trained up to 2022. So next up, let's see how we can bring this model into Power Automate. So jumping over into Power Automate, I have a manually triggered flow. I'm going to add in an input here, which is going to be my user request. And because this is chat completion, it means that we can pass on that request to the model. Then I'm going to add in an HTTP action. Now, of course, this is a premium action. You could use a custom connector as well, which is also a premium, but I'm going to insert the URL that I copied earlier. So using my Windows V, I can grab that endpoint URL that I've got here. And then it's worth noting that you need to add on a bit extra in order to hit that endpoint. So if I quickly jump across onto documentation, you can see that we need to hit V1 chat completions. So if I copy that to my clipboard also, jump back into Power Automate, I can paste that on the end of the URL. And then the method is post. 
When it comes to header, I need to have an authorization key and the value is based on the key that I copied from the playground earlier. I can paste that in here from my clipboard like so. Now when it comes to the body, if we jump back across into the documentation again, there is a sample body and you can see it has a messages key with an array of both roles for the system and the user and we'll pass in the user dynamically from that trigger of the flow. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to copy that body and we'll jump back into our flow and we'll paste it in here. So we have the role of the system, which is the prompt, you're a helpful assistant, to translate from English to Italian. I'm gonna change this to say you're a helpful assistant that knows everything about the Power Platform. And then in the role for the user, rather than having this fixed string here, I'm gonna make it a dynamic value based on the user request like so and i'll keep the temperature and maximum tokens the same and i notice we've got a rogue comma there so i'm just going to remove that from the sample body so that it's no longer appearing after 512 and then finally i'm going to add in a compose which will enable me to get the output from the http action now if i jump back across onto the documentation and scroll a bit further down we can see the sample response the sample response includes not only the number of tokens that have been used at the bottom here with the usage, but the key for choices, which includes a message object. So that's part of an object which is in an array for choices. We want to get back the first choice and the message with content, and that'll enable us to get the response back into our compose action. So back over in Power Automate, we want to create an expression where we're gonna get the first from the body of the HTTP action, specifically trying to get the choices array. So we'll put in choices there in square brackets. That'll get us our first object. And then we can put in some square brackets and a question mark like so to get message forward slash content. So that allow us to return back the first message content from within the choices array into our compose. And I'll go ahead and hit add. Now, if I hit the test button, of course, it's gonna prompt me to supply my user text when I go into manual and test. I'm going to ask it to write me an expression so that I can get the first message content from the following object. And I'll paste in the object that I copied from the document and we'll run the flow and see how the Mistral model copes with that Power Platform question. Now we can see from the flow response we have in the Power Platform, you can use PowerFX language. I don't think it is PowerFX in Power Automate officially. Uh, it is a different expression language used in Logic Apps and Power Automate, but we'll let it off there. It has defined me an expression where we get the first from this item dot choices. Of course, it didn't know that we had the body of the HTTP action, which we would replace in here, but it has used this dot notation to get the dot message content. So actually, if I was to copy this expression here and go back into edit, I can go into my compose action and remove the existing expression into the formula bar here. I can paste in that expression that we got and highlight this item dot choice and I'll replace it with the body. If we add that, save and test, I actually think it's got the expression correct. I'm going to ask the model, what is the difference between cloud and desktop flows, which is a video that I did last week. We'll hit run and we'll see what kind of response we get back. So it's failed and I think this is because of the expression, but actually I've just realized that as well as getting first body HTTP, we also need to still get the choices because that is the array. I'm going to update this and test it on the original request. And so I'll select the automatic with a recently used trigger, hit test, and it has. We've got a nice explanation here of what a cloud flow is and also what a desktop flow is. In fact, referencing RPA, which is one of the confusions I've tried to expel in my most recent video. So not only did this model give me quite a useful expression with a slightly different notation, 
it also has been able to use the natural language to respond to my request for an explanation of what cloud and desktop flows are. Now, if we pop over in the HTTP action, what we'll see in the body is our role for the system and the user. And if we were building up the history of the conversation, we'd obviously start to build up also these pairs of both the user, but also if we look at the bottom here at the body response, we also have the role of the assistant. So our models, both in ChatGPT, but also in Mistral, have those three different roles, the system, the user, and the assistant. And if we want to build up that history context over time, we actually need to resubmit those pairs back to the model. So I have got a solution where I built that via a power app where I send back the ongoing pairs so that the model has the history context of the conversation. And so I thought I'd show you a very quick demo of that in action. And if there's sufficient interest, I can maybe explain how that flow is built if you let me know in the comments below. So over on my Power App, I'm gonna do a very quick demonstration. This Canvas app has a text input. It also has a gallery. So the text input allows me to ask a question. The gallery enables me to display the questions and answers as pairs from a collection where the information from the flow is being saved. And of course, when you hit the ask button, we're actually calling a flow that calls the Mistral API with the history and the context of that conversation, enabling us to see the history context back from the Mistral API. So if I put the Power App into play mode, I can ask a question like, where is Aberdeen and hit enter. And this is calling a flow, which is then in turn calling the Mistral API. And you can see we get a description of where Aberdeen is. And I, if I was to ask how far is it to Edinburgh, I haven't specifically called out Aberdeen at this point. And because I'm sending back pairs for both the user and the assistant, we're getting the history context. And you can see that the model has identified that the distance between Aberdeen and Edinburgh is approximately 125 miles. If I was to ask where is the nearest city to both of them, again, we'll have the history of the fact that I've asked about Aberdeen and Edinburgh, and the Mistral model should hopefully identify some near cities to both of Aberdeen and Edinburgh. And so Dundee is smack bang in the middle of the two cities. If I jump across onto my flow and do a quick refresh, we should be able to see several runs, the first of which here at 3.42 should have just the single pair with my first question about Aberdeen. So if we pop open the history, we can see that the question here is where is Aberdeen and the full dialogue is empty. If I jump back, we can have a look at the flow run after that and again, pop open the input. So not only do we have the question, how far is it to Edinburgh? We also have the full dialogue, which you can see is an array and it includes the role of the system which is about being uh, an internal chatbot, but we also have the pair for the user, which is where is Aberdeen, and we also have the role for the assistant. And so what's happening is between the flow and the power app, we're building up the history and the full dialogue, which enables that language model to understand the history context. So after each run, we're actually submitting the full data of the history of that conversation to our model. If I jump back once more, we can have a look at the last run of the flow. Again, look at the trigger. Where is the nearest city to both of them? This will, of course, contain all the information about the role of the assistant and also the user. But if I go into the scope and show you how some of that flow works, we have the system prompt, which is the default prompt if no question history is there previously. We have the system array, which shows us the structure of the system and the content. I've then got the user array, which is the nearest city to both of them, which was the last question that I asked. And then between the next few actions, I've got some logic to determine, is this a brand new question, i.e. do we just tag on the system, or is it a historic, in which case we need to have all of those pairs, as we can see here, and we send that across to the language model. So if I was to go and jump down and have a look at the response, we can see the original question, the generated answer, but also the dialogue history, which is that array that contains all the pairs for the system, the user, and the assistant. And by passing all that information across on each turn, we're able to maintain that history context within our language model, whether that's ChatGPT or 
the new Mistral language model that I've today installed in Azure.